Uh, this morning, uh, students would have sat paper two, both at higher and le uh, lower level in Irish. Uh, paper one would have been a paper that had been very widely predictable. Uh, paper two, I'll get to eventually, that would have been maybe certain little testing grounds for people taking ordinary level. In relation to the language side of paper, of the higher level paper, uh, one comprehension dealing with the homelessness. Uh, this would be a topic that a lot of students would have done a lot of preparation uh, for in relation to both the oral exam and indeed even preparing that topic yesterday for the essay section. So I think they would have got great comfort in that comprehension. It wouldn't have been challenging. Uh, the vocabulary was very straightforward and uh, I don't think they would have had any difficulty whatsoever. Uh, comprehension number one, again, would have been of equal standard. Maybe not a topic students would have had a lot of information on. It was dealing with the organisation One Young World. But again, uh, language would have been straightforward. Questions, while they were fairly um, numerous, dividing into various sections, such two, two points of question one, it might have taken up a little bit of time, but for the content and for the comprehension, it wouldn't have posed any difficulty. In the three questions that are left, that is the prose section, the poetry, and question four, all areas would have been very, very widely anticipated. Strangely enough, in Coca Millish, uh, being a film, yet they didn't deal with fil filming techniques. Question dealing with Catherine and Paul, again, students would have known that. And indeed, if they weren't dealing with Coca Millish, they would have taken on Las Aquila dealing with Mikkel and Seamus. So again, um, students would have had no difficulty in those questions. Kulskara was either going to be, I would imagine, Kulskara and Gaben. And in relation to Kulskara, contrast was always going to be the big question, and indeed it featured this morning. Question number two was asking the feelings that you felt, and I hope students would have seen that this morning, on the plane, how did you feel? Could you relate to the poem, etc., etc. Uh, very straightforward. And then, indeed, question 4A, uh, on three. This will be the most popular, I suppose, choice in question number four. Uh, the only thing I'd say about the question on three, it was a dull question, uh, dealing with Bani Koha, say Gleam and Sean. Uh, students really couldn't show any spark of imagination. It would have been difficult, different if they'd been asked maybe on the Tiak Charman, but you know, run of the mill question. A dull question, but it wouldn't have posed a difficulty. Uh, Culmon, it was either again going to be Culmon or Queen Arthelira, and Culmon featured. Uh, dealing with the theme, exp explanation of certain lines, and the atmosphere. I don't student think students would have really had any axe to grind. Uh, they knew this morning that if it was going to be Culmon, the chance of getting uh, the theme was going to be major, and indeed it featured. Uh, turning very briefly to paper number two in relation to ordinary level, comprehensions were straightforward, but the area that I would find maybe students might be a little worried about would have been in the prose section. Um, these two stories, Oshin and Tiernog and Herlan Buck, would have been the two areas that featured last year, so students would have been very surprised to see both of them, whatever about one, but certainly both featuring it today. Uh, but they did, and they're quite department are quite entitled to put the two on. Um, they were straightforward questions just in relation to um, Oshin and Tiernog. Question number one, describe uh, the appearance of Neve. Uh, that is technical enough, the appearance from her hair to how she was dressed, to the brooch, uh, to the long cloak. Uh, but then again, there would already been five marks going for it. So students shouldn't worry too much if they were thrown by that. They had a choice between Oshin and Tiernan Oog and Herlenbuck, and in Herlenbuck they were talking about Lizian's life and the preparation of the party, which I mean would have won hands down, I would imagine. Um, then turning to uh, the prose, or sorry, the poetry section, uh, a choice between Magrosa, Ida Lubini and Antarakir, and again I would feel that Antarakir will, will win over. Questions on Antarakir were grand, uh, question number one divided into four, two marks for each, very straightforward, very easily to understand. Um, and then question number three, did you like the poem and give any true reason? So it's giving you a great amount of flexibility. Magrosso e Lubini is not a popular poem per se, irrespective of the type of question that they get. Um, one area maybe question two in talking about an image that is humorous. So students might have talked more about the image as opposed to humour, but I wouldn't worry too much. You know, once you deal, you'll get half the marks anyway, and it only had eight marks going for it. By and large, um, Outside of the shock the students will have got in the pro section in uh, the ordinary level, uh, the paper would have been fair enough.